Okay, so how well do you actually understand how to solve algebra equations? Well, if you're pretty strong in algebra, then you should be able to solve this equation pretty easily without the aid of a calculator. All right, so let's take a look at the problem. We have 2 to the x minus 1 over 2 to the 3 minus 4x, and all this is equal to 16, and we're looking to solve for the variable x. Now, this is a multiple choice uh, question, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 8 over 5, B is 6, C is 9, and D is 4 over 7. All right, so the only rule here is no calculators, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I will solve this uh, equation step by step without a calculator. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's take another look at this equation. So again, we're trying to figure out what the value of x is equal to. So 2 to the x minus 1 over 2 to the 3 minus 4x. All this is equal to 16. And uh, let's take a look at the right answer. The correct answer is A, 8 over 5. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic exponential equations. You see, this type of equation right here, the exponent, I'm sorry, the um, variable x is in the exponent spot of this power. Now, in algebra, we solve all different types of equations, and uh, this type of equation, exponential equations, is typically taught in like uh, second year algebra courses like Algebra 2. So if you've never uh, seen this before, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm totally confused. Matter of fact, I'm not even sure I study this in math. Well, no big deal. I'm going to show you exactly what's going on here. This is not that difficult. But uh, again, uh, we don't want to use a calculator. But let's get to the actual problem. And uh, there's a big, big clue here. For those of you that still have to uh, take math exams, so if you're in some sort of course or if you uh, obviously got to take a math test, math quiz, math exam, you know, for a grade, uh, you know, or anybody actually watching this video, there should be no reason uh, for anyone to get this problem wrong. Now, what am I talking about? Because some of you might be very interested in that. Like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, show me how to get the right answer without actually doing the work. Well, let me show you a big clue. Now, if you are taking, again, a math test or uh, some sort of quiz and you come across an equation, okay, type of uh, uh, question. So here we're dealing with an algebraic equation because we have an equal symbol. We're looking to solve for a variable. And it is also a multiple choice question, all right? So one of these here is the answer. Now, there's two approaches you could take uh, to uh, figure out the answer, the correct answer to the problem, right? So that is first, you could just solve the equation. Now, let's suppose you don't know how to solve the equation. Well, the second option is to plug in these values into X and just basically test to see if these values work until you uh, find the actual value that in fact is the solution. So for example here, we can test uh, B6 by plugging in a 6 right here. So we have 2, or we'll, uh, replace the X with 6. So this is going to be 6 minus 1, which of course is 5. So that's 2 to the 5th. And then over here, we would have 2 to the 3 minus 4 times 6. Right, And then here, you can see, like, well, I don't know. I'm going to end up with a negative value. This is a positive value. And you can just kind of do the number crunching. Now, this is a little bit difficult, obviously, if you don't have a calculator. But you could still figure out the right answer by plugging in, uh, you know, the options in your multiple choice uh, exam. Or, I'm sorry, multiple choice question. Never forget that technique. So, you know, again, if you're taking a test like the SAT, ACT, you know, it's a real important critical test. Oftentimes, they'll give you a multiple choice question uh, and an equation, 
And it's kind of designed to be like, all right, uh, if you don't know how to solve this, just plug in these values and see which one works. All right, so obviously the correct answer is A, 8 over 5. But uh, we're not doing this problem with a calculator. So plugging in the values could take a good amount of time. So what we need to do is understand kind of the properties of what's going on in this equation. And that is we have a power uh, being divided by another power. All right, so we've got to figure out how to work with this part of the equation. And of course, all of this is equal to 16. And that's going to bring us to understanding a, a, a real a particular property of powers and exponents. So when you learn algebra, uh, one of the most important uh, chapters and topics that you study is how to work with powers and exponents. So that would include how to multiply uh, various uh, powers and exponents, how to divide, how to take a power over power. you got to understand these particular properties. And the one that we need to understand for this particular problem is how do we divide um, uh, powers and exponents. Now we need to get something very clear here that here um, our base in both of these powers is 2. Okay, So if I have like 2 to the third power, this 3 is the exponent. Okay, that's what we call that. The 2 is the base. The entire thing is a power. So here when you have a division situation with two powers or a multiplication situation with two powers and the bases are the same, then we can actually simplify this. But if the bases were different, well, we're kind of stuck. In other words, if, instead of a two, let's say this was like a seven where there's nothing we can do. So again, you know, these are things that you will learn when you study uh, powers of properties or pro excuse me, uh, properties of powers and exponents. All right, so again, we need to uh, think about division of powers where the bases are the same, and that's going to bring us to this particular property right here. All right, so here's the formal property, a to the n uh, divided by a to the m. What we're saying here is that when we, are, uh, when we divide one power with the base of a by another power with the base of a, in other words, we're dividing uh, two powers with the same bases but different exponents, well, what we can do here uh, is subtract the actual exponent. So uh, the rule here is a to the n uh, divided by a to the m is equal to a to the n minus n. So what we're going to do is uh, subtract the exponents, and we're going to start with the numerator exponent first. So let's go ahead and see an example. So let's suppose we have 3 to the 10th uh, divided by 3 to the 4th. Well, these are two powers. The bases are the same. So we can divide these powers by subtracting the exponents. And this is really important. We start with uh, the numerator exponent first. So this is going to be 10 minus 4. right? So 10 minus 4 is 6. So this is 3 to the 6. And this makes sense because let's just think about this problem right here. Uh, 3 to the 10th. What does that mean? Well, this means we're going to multiply 3 by itself 10 times. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, hopefully that is uh, 10 threes. And then we have 3 to the 4th, which is what? 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? We're multiplying uh, 3 by itself 4 times. Well, we could cross-cancel uh, these four threes with another four threes up here. 1, 2, 3, 4. And what are we left with? Well, we have six threes, all right? So that's three to the sixth power. So a lot of these properties make sense, you know, if you can kind of uh, see them in action with basic uh, little examples like this. All right, so this is the property that we need to use. And what we want to do here is use this property to simplify this part of the equation. So if you think you know where I'm going here, well, maybe you should pause the video and see if you could do the basic algebra. But let's go ahead and do this right now. All right, so here is our problem. And I'm like, all right, I have uh, two powers here. The bases are the same, so I can subtract the exponents. Now, you have to be very, very, very careful here. Matter of fact, this is uh, a really critical part of what I'm going to um, kind of show you in this equation because we have uh, two differences in the exponents. Now, notice there's no parentheses around uh, these exponents, but you always add them in because that's really going to, um, you know, help you avoid making common mistakes. So if you have a group, um, in other words, a sum or a difference, anything 
uh, being um, you know added together or subtracted, put the parentheses around that group if you don't see them, because sometimes you know math books are not going to be that friendly, or maybe your teacher on a test, so they're going to expect you that hey yes you're going to uh, you're going to want to put those parentheses in so you don't make any errors. All right, so what we're going to do now is apply this um, property a to the m over a to the n, and that's going to be equal to a to the m minus n. So uh, let's see if you can use this property uh, on this uh, particular situation. Again, we have the same basis, so you're going to start with this exponent here and subtract it away from this exponent using the parentheses, and then you need to be very careful because we have a lot of... Uh, uh, subtraction sign, negative sign situations, and that is always a very, uh, you know, it's a big hot spot for making errors in mathematics. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, apply that property right now. So we're going to end up with 2 to the x minus 1 minus 3 minus 4x. So remember, we're going to uh, start with the numerator, which is x minus 1, okay, and then we're going to subtract away the denominator exponent, which is 3 minus 4x, all right? So I'm kind of squeezing this right here, but here is the work right here. All right, so 2 to the x minus 1 minus 3 minus uh, 4x is equal to 16. All right, now we need to be very careful on simplifying uh, these exponents because we have all these negative values. So uh, we need to use the distributive property. So let's uh, take this negative sign and distribute it in right here. So that's going to be a negative 3, and then a negative times a negative is positive. So that negative 4x is going to turn into a positive 4x, and this uh, negative outside of this 3 is going to be negative 3. And then here we have x minus 1. And we can kind of drop the parentheses right now because we need to kind of um, clean up all the terms in the exponent. So we have x minus 1 minus 3. So minus 1 minus 3, that's going to give me a negative 4. And then an x, or uh, 1x and 4x, is a 5x. All right, so now our equation is 2 to the uh, 5x minus 4 is equal to 16. All right, so that's like the first phase of solving this problem without a calculator, but we are not done. So we need to take additional steps, and let's go ahead and do that right now. But before we do that, I need you to do this, and that is to hit that subscribe button. I definitely need your support to continue to grow this channel and help as many people as possible in mathematics. My whole kind of goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. You know, and, and uh, not in a like real formal type of way. I can use formal language here in you know very technical terms from a mathematical standpoint. But uh, typically, when you teach math the first time to people, they're like, "This is why I hate math because you know it's so esoteric. I'm like totally confused." Well, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. So if you are struggling in math, please don't give up. You know, find someone that you, uh, you know, like to learn from, right? And hopefully that's me. And if you're interested in learning uh, more from me, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Kind of the topic that we're talking about here, exponential equations. You might want to check out like my Algebra 2 and or pre-calculus courses. All right, so let's get back to uh, the problem. So here is what we have. We have 2 to the uh, 5x minus 4 is equal to 16. Now, before I... And you kind of see I'm taking a step here. But at this point in the problem, we have an exponential equation. Again, we're trying to solve for the exponent in, um, I'm sorry, trying to solve for the variable in the exponent location of this power. So typically, when you have uh, an exponential equation, we use logarithms to solve that equation. So one thing I could do here is actually take the log of both sides of the equation. So if you ever uh, wondered what this uh, button is on your calculator, LOG, or the LN button, well, uh, these are logarithm buttons. This is the common log, this is the natural log. But when you have exponential equations, typically uh, you're going to have to use logarithms to solve that type of equation, but not in every single uh, scenario. In this particular case, there's something we can do to avoid using logarithms to solve this equation. But it's important that you understand that when you do see an exponential equation, you need to be thinking about logarithms because if this problem it was, uh, let's say, 17 and not 16, well, we'd have to use uh, logarithms. Now, because uh, this whole power right here is equal to 16, uh, we can solve this equation without the aid of a calculator 
because what we can do is a little bit of a trick. So here on the left-hand side, I have a power where the base is 2, and then this is equal to 16. So what you want to do is look at this number and say, hmm, can I rewrite this number such that it also has a base of 2? And a lot of you are like, yeah, of course, Mr. YouTube Math Man, because 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So this is what you want to do. We want to rewrite this number such that uh, it's uh, expressed as a power with the same base of 2. And this is going to really unlock this solution pretty easily for us. So let's change the 16 to 2 to the 4th. And now, hopefully, most of you can see how we're going to get to the solution. All right, so let's uh, take a look at this next step. And the, uh, the way we can solve this problem is pretty easy. So I have this thing on, on this side of the equation is equal to this thing right here. In other words, uh, we're saying that these values are the same, right? So this is equal to this. Well, if the bases are the same, well, that means the exponents must be the same. In other words, the only way this thing on the left-hand side can be equal to this thing on the right-hand side, and the bases are the same, well, the exponents must be the same. In other words, if I say 2 to the third is equal to 2 to the what? Well, this what must be 3, okay? Because this is what we're saying mathematically. So what we could do here is equate the exponents. So that means we're going to just say, all right, well, 5x minus 4, you must be equal to 4. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to solve this basic linear equation. Now, there's different types of equations in algebra. Matter of fact, there's a lot of different type of equations. And uh, in algebra, you first start to learn how to solve these type of equations, which are called linear equations. Then you have systems of equations, quadratic equations, on and on and on, to include exponential logarithmic equations and a ton of other types as well. So I want to bring that up because a lot of people are like, yeah, I just need to learn how to solve algebra equations. Well, the whole topic or subject of algebra really is uh, teaching you how to solve various types of equations. That's a huge part of the subject, and that would include, you know, like pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, pre-calculus. As you continue to learn mathematics, you're really learning how to solve uh, different types of equations, right? So there's not just one type of equation you need to uh, study uh, in mathematics. All right, so hopefully most of you are like, yes, I can solve this equation. So 5x minus 4 is equal to 4. So to solve this, all we have to do is add 4 to both sides of the equation. We get 5x is equal to 8. And now we could divide both sides of the equation by 5. So x is equal to 8 over 5. All right, so um, for those of you that are at this level of math, in other words, like algebra 2 or pre-calculus, college algebra, intermediate algebra, typically, again, second-year algebra courses, uh, your teacher is going to give you quizzes and exams uh, where um, there's not going to be uh, a calculator allowed because they want to see you working with these uh, properties of powers and exponents. And they just kind of want to see if you're looking out for opportunities where you can equate uh, you know, two powers with the same base. Because if you could do that, you could solve a lot of different type of problems in mathematics. All right, so hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.